Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons! Terrorize! Hello, welcome to TFYLP. Uh, we're doing a pre-record this week, so it's uh, going to be up for an unknown date in the future. Um, I'm Lucas, and I am here with Jim. What? Who are you people? What are you doing in my house? And Jack. We're time travelers. <laughs> What's up, people? <laughs> and Anna. Anna. Greetings. No weird so, jokes. Uh, Sorry. I, I, I feel oh. like every time that we have Jack and Jim on, I feel like that there's like some type of joke involved, you know? Yeah. I'm sorry, Jack, Jack and Jim? What? Jack and Jim. Oh. I mean, I just try to make, make it a happy place, so you know, I thought so. What? What's the? I don't get the joke. Well, Jack and Jim are two popular types of wh whiskey. Ah, whiskey. Uh, Jack yeah, Daniels Jack and Jimmy. Oh! So there's wow. always yeah. Jack Daniels. You got gin. You got Jack Daniels. <laughs> well, we're here to educate today, viewers. Now you've learned something. <laughs> something I didn't. Yeah. I don't... <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyway, so uh, today's topic Anywho. is we're going to talk about uh, forgotten Transformers. So uh, some forgotten Transformers lines, some uh, forgotten uh, cartoons, and then also, you know, what we think may be lost to time here in the future. Um, so, yeah. So, Anna, I guess this is, uh, you know, your topic suggestion. So I don't know if you want to start us off with... Uh, What's well, I want to start off with something that is, you know, I actually proposed this topic quite a while ago, but recent events actually make it a little more useful because I feel like nothing is too obscure to make a comeback. Because yeah, that, um, I mean, I don't know a whole lot about the history behind it, but we're recording this in, um, gosh, what month is it? September, early September. And recently we found out we're getting a Generation Selects version of a sand colored cone head, which yeah. they're calling Sandstorm. Mm -hmm. And that is something that, you know, I didn't even know about that being a, I suppose it's a rejected G2 design. Is that what it is? If I. I've been hearing. Well, I mean, it wasn't rejected. It was just something where G2 never. got cut off, so then it right. never okay. was produced. I mean, now, I would imagine, and we could probably, you know, if we talk to Rick, every single toy line, I'm sure, probably has designs that never get produced just because, you know, they end up, like, you know, what, what toy line actually goes longer than what they're expecting, you know, these days. So. Right, of course. But we're living in a world where, you know, a lot of people really like the design and colors in G2 Ramjet. You know, that was my, that was actually my first seeker toy as a kid. But we're getting this canceled or unproduced G2 design before we get a G2 Ramjet, which is just kind of funny to me that that's the way things are going at this point. Um, but, you know, a similar thing happened uh, with uh, Megatron as well. Yeah. We got the unreleased uh, Megatron first before we got uh, from G2, before we got the one that was, you know, arguably the the more popular one, the uh, <coughs> the green one. I I would think, I mean, I don't know, that's where I, f I, I feel like that, uh, the green uh, G2 Megatron is kind of like the most iconic. It's the one I see the most, at least, uh, as far as like if you're rummaging through toy bins and whatnot. 
but it you know it took years and years like we actually got a couple different versions we got the hero megatron that was the purple one and then we also got that unreleased one and we've actually gotten that unreleased one twice i think because one was uh released by the club is like in a pretender shell and then we yep. also re got the one from uh generation selects as well Nope. Yes, it's crazy to think how obscure things get sometimes, but then there's just things that, you know, as a fandom, we don't talk about nearly as much. Some of it's because it was so bad that we don't want to ever talk about it again, and some of it just, like, I feel like didn't resonate with fans for one reason or another, so I kind of wanted to talk about those things, and then I feel like at this point, like I said, we can make some predictions about the weird stuff that might actually end up accidentally coming back in the next year or two because things are getting so obscure. So, you know, at this moment, I would tell you that I don't think we'd ever see anything approximating the mutants from Beast Wars ever again. However, we're getting new Beast Wars style figures soon mm. and things are going super obscure. So who knows what could happen? It's fun. I'm saying I'm, I'm hoping for, uh, for uh, War for Cybertron Poison Bite. <coughs> and the and the Selects Rhetorica repaint. Tell us tell us what Cyberbite is from. Poison Bite? Poison Bite, Beast sorry. Beast Beast Wars. Wars. Here's like the like the fish hornet hybrid thing where like Oh entire, yeah, the, okay. The entire yep. fish was his no, head. I remember. Yeah. Yeah, because um imagine what that, is that the imagine medium? getting that one in Kingdom. What is the name of the Fusor that showed up in Cyberverse? It's just... Oh. Uh, skipping my mind right now. Oh, uh, you would have asked me, wouldn't you? Yeah, I'll no, get there. Was... I'll remember the name. No, that, no, that, that okay, wasn't Soundwave, really. was it? No, no, Soundwave sound was mutants. Uh, we'll get there, we'll get there. Don't worry about it for now. We'll remember it. That's Yeah, that's going to put me up. So... Um, I guess we could just start by, like, do you want to start by talking about forgotten toy lines, or do you want to start by talking about forgotten shows or media fiction? So I'm going to expand it to comics, of course, because I think I prefer comics to shows. Well, one thing, I guess, before we start, I'm just curious, like, do you think that we're going to get Beast Machines in Kingdom or, like, as, as repaints, or do you think that we're not going to actually get that line that it's just going to be Beast Wars and then they'll just do some type of repaints of, of them. I'm just curious like what these generation selects are going to end up being you know for these for Kingdom. I think that's a good question oh. and I also think that that's a good way for us to kind of start with Beast Machines because Beast Machines was definitely one of those series that I wanted to touch on today because it's <laughs> it's not precisely forgotten, but it's more like people want to effortly forget it. <laughs> yeah. And I just had a conversation with a friend of mine last night about, you know, kind of why we want to forget Beast Machines, which is a little bit removed from the quality of the toys and the quality of the animation. But um, our designs, designs, the animation was fine. Anyway, so yeah, Beast Machines. I don't think so. One thing, one reason I don't think so is because selects have largely been straight repaints. And Beast Machines would require not even retools. They just require completely different molds. Because, yes, Beast Wars Cheetor and Beast Machines Cheetor are the same person. They're both cheetahs. But the designs are just so different. And the overall look of the guy is so different. I just don't think you could use the same figure to be both of them. Personally. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think that unless they are... I, I don't think that they're going to do that just because it would anger fans. Like, whatever fans uh -huh. there are of Beast Machines... Um, they probably <laughs> would not be happy with that. Like, cause I know, you know, a similar thing I felt like happened with Siege and, um, the, um, you know, a couple of their homages that they did, uh, from Unicron Trilogy where, you know, mm. people were annoyed that it wasn't close enough to the Unicron Trilogy, um, uh, molds or whatnot. So, I... I mean, so a lot so, of people liked them, but some, some didn't. So, and then was, also, like, shot, right? yeah, like Hot Shot and, um, yeah. well, I mean, I was, had Ultraman I was trying to remember if it was Hot Shot or Red Alert. It was, it was one of, 
the, the, the hound. Right. It was Cybertron de- defense hot okay. shot out of hound. Okay, I, I thought that was what it was. Yeah, and people, like, the figure was good, just some people weren't quite happy that it was exactly close enough. I feel like it was really close, but I wasn't a Unicron Trilogy friend fan. I mean, perhaps if they had I some kind of that. add-on or weapon or something that could, like, increase the height of the shoulders, it might have might have helped a little bit with that. But overall, I didn't think it was too bad. Get rid of some of the posability. There, there wow. were actually some add-on kits, I think, that got made that yeah. actually got it closer to you. So it's like if you, well, if you really care, yeah, th- third party, sure. I, I, I just meant like I guess part of Select's thing to make it unique, as, in addition to being exclusive. So, but so, yeah, anyway. no, I mean, I think that it probably depends on on some of those figures just in general. Like, for myself, like, I don't have enough of a connection to the character that I'm... I personally am good with a lot of those where it's, like, close enough. But I know there's a lot of people where they get up... They get mad when they make a figure that's close enough but not exact because, like, you know that's probably the only time we're ever going to get that figure. So, you know. Yeah, and Beast Machines, I feel like, is something that people, like I said, effortfully don't like. And I think the only the only Generations figure we've gotten from Beast Machines is Tinkor, right? He's the only one who's gotten, yes. yeah, that Tinkor that is okay. Well, this is the original basic, but hang on. Is that the original basic? Okay. The, the you drone, held it up yeah. very fast. I actually like the drone a lot, but it was a very simple figure. But anyway, like, you could make the Viacon Generals out of our currently running War for Cybertron stuff, right? Like, you could pull a Tinkor out of the various tanks. You could pull a Jetstorm out of the various jets. You probably would have yeah, a hard maybe. time with Rust. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, but, but it wouldn't be exactly I, I still right? want Botanica. Like, that's what, right? I want Botanica. Make Botanica just, out of the Quintessa mold. Well, I mean, just... It wouldn't even have to be an existing mold. Just maybe just have it flip inside out from the other mold. I don't know. It's just just a, a plant form is just intriguing to me. I don't know. I think it would be great too, but I yeah. just I don't see it really coming back because I feel like with Beast Machines, you know, there were a few reasons that people wanted to forget Beast Machines, and like I said, one of them was just the toys weren't. You know, something happened with Beast Machines toys. It's like Beast Wars toys are still, they've retained their value or they've gained in value. Series after Beast Wars, we've kind of done the same. Beast Machines, when I finally went in and wanted to sell all my Beast Machines because I was a foolish teenager who bought every single figure from that line, <laughs> I couldn't get any money for them at all. You know, everything was like basics are worth like $2 and deluxes are worth like 5 and finding a buyer takes months type of thing. It was a bummer. I feel like people really rejected Beast Machines, just kind of want to forget it. How do you guys yeah. think that is? So, Silverbolt was rather enjoyable, though. Tra- Transformers the chicken. Enjoyable. I don't know. Air quotes. He, he, he had a man bun. Like the little samurai man bun thing. He did. He had man bun before it was cool. I know, right? He was a trendsetter. But yeah, I, I don't know why Beast Machines was so, you know, I don't know. I, I feel like at the time it seemed like it was reviled, and then now it's kind of just forgotten. But I, I don't, like, I don't hear anyone clamoring for Beast Machines, you know, mm-hmm. to this day. Like, as you hear a lot of people, like, you're like, oh, like, can you redo Unicron Trilogy or, you know, Animated or Prime or, you know, things like that. And, and you know... I, I don't, I don't really hear anyone like tr- you know saying, "Oh, we need more beast machines." So part of it might just be that the toys were kind of eh. You know, like yeah. like Jim said, some of them are fun, but almost fun in a sarcastic way. Like that that Silverwood toy actually wasn't bad, but it was such a betrayal of his original design that people didn't really like the design that was in the cartoon and then B, it didn't actually look like the cartoon. And then there was it looked scale. Like different. Uh, yeah, they, the scale they was really Machine random. Scale. Night Scream. Night Scream was one Compared of the biggest to toys. Megatron. 
Do people or, in general hate Night Scream? Because I hate Night Scream. Or, or, or Dawn's favorite character. Oh. <laughs> Remember Cheetor? Cheetor. <laughs> of the Supreme flavor. Yes. Supreme yes. class Cheetor. And then, and then you had the... And then you had the some of the generals in different scale from their drones. And the drones, far and away, for the most part, were more accurate than the generals. Much. They were better toys. They were just the they were the superior figures. Even though they were simpler, they were just they were now, actually now, what they were supposed uh, to be. Obsidian and Stryka were spot on. Those, those, those two were well done. They were good. I mean, at least Obsidian and Straka, like, we got them in, um, uh, whatchamacallit, in a club pack, right? Or was it a BotCon pack? I can't remember which one. And then we've also gotten third-party representations of them as well. So they they at least least have gotten some type of representation. And I can see Hasbro doing a Straka as well. Didn't they in Cyberverse? Uh, It's not Straka, per se. A new oh. character. I see. Oh, okay. Kind, kind of like what they did with uh, Lugnut and uh, Clobber. Yeah, maybe there. I don't think there's. I haven't watched all of Cyberverse yet, but I don't think there's a Striker. There's Shadow Striker. That might be what I was thinking of. Like a name homage, almost, but a yeah. completely yeah. different that, character. That might... An interesting character who will likely be forgotten to the same yeah. time. You know, so something else that was uh, neglected that we're we're actually coming up on an anniversary here in less than a year is uh, uh, car robots, robots in disguise. Right, and that was. Go ahead, Lucas. Oh, I was going to say that was going to be my pick, actually. I think too, because yeah. I kind of feel like car robots was. I mean, you know, at the time is is released and whatnot, and I, I feel like that it's kind of <coughs> universally kind of somewhat forgotten. I, I think part of that is, is a fair amount of the toys, at least, were just straight up repaints of older molds. So, mm. really, yeah, there's that problem. Really, was, was, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Anna. Before we go on to the next thing, I just wanted to say, I think to finish with Beast Machines, oh, I sure. think the reason that people kind of left it behind was because it was kind of a betrayal in two ways. One, that it was a sequel. You know, it tried to actually be a sequel to Beast Wars, which people loved, that took all the designs, changed all of them, negated the victory at the end of the series, which as a fan of fiction, I absolutely hate when that happens. You know, you go through this emotional roller coaster and everything is just canceled at the end of it by a plot twist. It's a bummer. (laughs) And, you know, it changed the designs of all your favorite characters, took Rat Trap from a fun designed to one of the most bizarre looking transformer things that never even got a proper toy except for the happy meal toy it was pretty accurate <laughs> it just it did a lot of that stuff all at the very beginning why and was he green end, right why was he green and then in the end it pretty much ended everything you know it provided a like real ending to the continuity almost it could have been the ending of the continuity mm-hmm. at that point and, you know, at that point, we ended up with spinoffs and retellings and alternate universes instead of just continuing from the G1 universe. So I feel like that just kind of left people, a bad taste in people's mouths. So people don't really want to go back to these machines. It, it's like it's like Transformers GT. Like GT was to Dragon Ball, you know, just oh, it yeah. went in a different direction no, and nobody liked it. it. No, it's we, we, we need Transformers place. Super to take its place. That's right, which is what we're getting now, right? We're getting attempt after attempt to actually make again, stuff. Again, again, again. Ad nauseum. <laughs> so we can move to car robots slash um, robots in disguise if you all want to. Well, really, if, if you think about it, it, in a way, it was sort of like universe before universe. Because it, yeah. it, it blended... Beast Wars molds, Generation One molds, Generation Two molds, uh, along with with new engineering, new new figures. Um, it was it was really well done, really enjoyable. But also, I mean, I think it was an interesting way to do 
things because like G2 when they released those they you know a lot of them were straight up repaints of uh, the you know G1 molds but then there wasn't really fiction to go along with it like they just kind of repackaged the G1 cartoon so I I think that you know that was kind of their attempt is like okay let's let's actually try to do it right and come up with a cartoon and all that type of thing and then you know go from a couple of different lores and whatnot but you know, I, I don't know how that how it sold and did at the time. How long did the cartoon end up running? Thirty nine episodes. It was on uh, it was on Fox Kids, which was a major network at, at that time. So it it got a pretty decent exposure. Um, but yeah, it uh, it, it it blended. Uh, you got you know, of course, Generation Two. You had the, the Laser Prime mold as, as Scourge. You had the Spy Changers. Generation One. You had the Combaticons. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, plus, it took so many liberties. Uh, look at the the uh, the car triplets, uh, Prowl, X, Braun, and, and Cyborg. The engineering of those was was just ridiculous at, at that time. You know, we were used to you know Beast Wars and Cyber Jets and stuff, and all of a sudden here comes Cyborg, where you got to turn like fifteen different things a certain way in order to flip the back panels, uh, and then. Uh, you know, Optimus and Magnus combining the way they did? Forget about it. The, it, it, it. All these years later, that still stands as one of the best representations of uh, of an Optimus Prime that we've got. Uh, it was a really to, neat design. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it didn't slavishly hang on to, with a death grip, Generation 1. It wasn't afraid to go, go to Hey Jim, your mic, your mic's cutting out there. It just went downhill. Yeah. He just trolled off, like a true storyteller. <laughs> but I'll say that I think one yeah. big problem with car robots slash robots in disguise is you know the fact that I keep using the term car robots because it really was a not the world's best localization of a Transformer series that was a new take and extremely anime. You know, it was a very it was a very Japanese take. It was a very anime take on Transformers. It felt like it felt like the anime of the day when I watched it in Japanese. And then when I watched it in English later, it felt like they tried to make it not feel as much like the anime of the day. They tried to make it feel like, you know, something that would be on the Fox Kids lineup. And I feel like that hurt the that hurt the fiction. You know, it obviously it didn't hurt the toys. The toys were still the new designs were still fantastic. People loved Fire Convoy slash the Optimus Prime, and I think that toy, you know, that design sticks around throughout toy lines. We've gotten a third party attempt at it, and I wouldn't be surprised if eventually we get a slice figure of at least Fire Convoy. I, I, but otherwise, I yeah, you. I don't think people really care. I, I think it would be amazing if we got a, a new version of uh, Robots in the Skies, Megatron, and Galvatron. Just, just some some new figure repainted that its alternate mode is just a giant hand. Mm-hmm. That's it. I'd love to see someone try that thing because that thing <laughs> is, you know, it has infinite modes. It does. You can just make so many different things out of it. It's elephant, a car. Bat, a dragon. Jets, dragons, hands. Uh, it's just preposterous. And I feel like at right? At the time it was actually a good design. And these days I feel like they could actually make it even better with the engineering we have in toys. You know, the funny thing is is that uh that mold had so many repaints that like theoretically if they threw that out as like a leader then they could just repaint it like five times and it would right. it would kind of work, you know? And I think it was kind of, like you said, it was somewhat of a beloved toy. Mm-hmm. It was neat. It was innovative. It was, I don't know, I definitely think it performed on multi-changing better than like Six Shot and the various attempts to go beyond three that we had before. I think it was really cool. There were some really cool things from that series. I just feel like the fiction didn't come out super well. 
I think I think out of the fiction, one of the things that has endeared the most that everybody loved him, no matter how evil he tried to be, Skybite. <laughs> Who doesn't love Skybite? I mean, come on, you've got high poetry and all kinds of ridiculous hijinks. I mean, it's just it's just a great character. And that's one of the figures, too, that's been redone multiple times as well in various lines. So they did it, what, in Thrilling 30? It's been in yeah. uh, Cyberverse now in the new Cyberverse. cartoon. So. Yep. Yeah. Skybite has a tendency to come out of left field. It'll just be like you're having your adorable toy line, and then suddenly a Skybite appears. Kind of like Repugnus lately. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But personally, I think it was the fiction there. Like, I think a lot of times with the with the so stories that don't last over time for us as Transformers fans, it has to do with the the fiction itself. You know, if it's not firmly vested in G one and it's not exceptional, like Beast Wars was, or some of the comics had been, then I think it tends to be mostly forgotten. I don't even know how popular Car Robots is in Japan, like as far as for Japanese fans, if they really are excited about that series or if they've kind of let it go too. Yeah, I don't know. That's sure. a good question. No idea. No idea. I know some things, like I remember people I hung out with, not like I wasn't really in like the internet culture of Transformers yet, but I did have Transformers friends. Everybody was really upset about the combining thing with Ultra Magnus because Ultra Magnus isn't a combiner. But it wasn't exactly supposed to be Ultra Magnus. It was God Bomber. You know, it was it was named after both of them because it had some Ultra Magnus cues as well as just being a, you know, kind of new version of God Bomber that we never had in the States. So we didn't really care about that version of the character. And to us, it was just like, oh... Ultramagnus used to be his own person, and now he's just an outfit that Optimus wears. This is so sad. I, I think it's kind of neat how, how it ended up being Ultra Magnus, though, and, and the way it combines. It's, in, in a roundabout way, almost <coughs> like a like a nod to Generation 1 in itself, because in G1 you had the, the Optimus Prime mold, the, the cab, and then the trailer became the armor. And that, that's that's similar to how it is here, where you have the Optimus, just the core body, not not the back half at all. Uh, and then Magnus separates and becomes Arm. So, yeah, I, I think that, it's, that, that's that's how I took it when when the series first came out. Anyway, I'm like, oh, hey, this is neat. It's definitely a dual know, homage. I just I just wish we would have gotten the Matrix Blade, the the, the Magnus Sword, or uh, Maximus Sword. I wish we would have got Maximus for that matter. <laughs> I guess, you know, drop test or whatever it was, the safety thing, they didn't release it. Yeah, we didn't get that either. You could import it back in the day. I remember how yeah. wildly expensive that was. Yeah, I, I, just remember, I just remember back, back then, uh, Transformers at retail were, you know, still decently priced. You know, a deluxe was like nine or ten bucks still. Uh, so I, I, I imagine before Max probably would have been about 60 or 70. You know. Back in my day. Okay. <laughs> Back in my day. You get a comic when you bought a deluxe for ten bucks. I was already a high school graduate. <laughs> so another toy line that was kind of like sandwiched in between Beast Wars and G two and all that I wanted to bring up was uh, Machine Wars. And I know like I don't know if you would say that it's forgotten or not, because I'm not even really sure if you it should count as Forgotten line. It probably gets more publicity than, you know, a an exclusive toy line should. But I know there's probably some people out there who are like, "What the heck is Machine Wars?" I have to admit, you had me worried there for a minute because I swear to God, you were about to say Animorphs. <laughs> oh, that's later. Don't worry, I'll get there. I promise. <laughs> so yeah, Machine Wars was a uh, they repainted a bunch of. Uh, G2 figures and then they it release it as an exclusive line in KB Toys I believe right yes KB exclusive so it, it wasn't very many figures big right it was a very small line it's like a yeah. dozen 
Yeah, roughly. Um, I think. I think I think it was like around around a dozen. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, well, it, it'll end up being smaller than the uh, the Netflix Walmart line. Right. You you had about eight flip changers, the like the the F one car and then the tow truck uh, with the jets. Yep. You had Soundwave, yep. Optimus, Starscream. Uh, nice. Basics were Hoist, Hubcat, Mirage, and Prowl for Autobots. Decepticons, Megaplex, Megatron, Skywarp, and Thundercracker. Megas, Megas were Sandstorm and Soundwave, and Ultras were Optimus and Starscream. Sandstorm is the one I forgot. Twelve toys. Yep. But it was interesting, um, at least a couple of those, like the Sandstorm and um, Soundwave, that was the only U.S. versions of those molds that we got, because those were repaints of the European, like those, um, what was it, the um, Turbo, Predator. Yeah, well, the Predator Soundwave Jets. Predator Stalker. Yep. And Sandstorm was Rotostorm. Rotostorm, yeah. I always wanted that sandstorm. I love that paint scheme. Well, it's it's pretty cheap, I think, on eBay. If you ever like, cause I I just picked the whole lineup because it was cheap and it was it was kind of a fun way to get some of those molds. So, although I like it, the it, European it was, versions better, it was neat to see an Optimus without a faceplate. That's yeah, kind of commonplace. It was now. new to us. Mm. Yep. Yeah, that it had no fiction, right? Machine Wars had no fiction. I, I don't believe it did at no. the time. Um, I don't think was, so. was there a pack-in comic in in the package? I don't think there was. Not that I know of. I don't recall. No form of accompanying fiction, nor even a story establishing packaging blurb to set the stage. Huh. Is what the I mean, they had the little yeah, cards. There's cards on the back about the different characters, but yeah, it's about it's about all you got. Do you guys remember packaging blurbs and bios? Yeah. All those characterization <laughs> to toys? Those were neat. When it was like it was a, a seven sentence paragraph? Where things are not what they seem. <laughs> right, it was yeah, fun, I know on the, but no uh, more. I was going to say, on the newer figures, uh, you know, they've kind of homaged some of the G1 packaging. And I know, like, with Earthrise, that they're putting in the little, um, like, red, like, decoder things or whatnot. Um, you know, so it like for the text yeah, packs yeah. or whatnot. Um, no. so yeah, it, kind of I think it'd be kind of cool to write up some of that stuff, but I mean, you'd Unless have to actually that. like, you know, pay for the art and for the, you know, for someone to write it up and whatnot. So it's, it's probably just something that they figured doesn't really sell the toy. Like, I'm sure people would think it's neat, but like, does it ultimately pay for itself? Probably not. Yeah. I've, I've got the, uh, the Starscream from Earth Rising. I don't. I don't recall any any red cellophane or anything. It's, yeah, it was uh, taped to the uh, planet map thing. So if you still have that lining, it's still most likely taped onto that. Yeah, it, it'd probably be on the box. Then. I miss that. Yeah. yeah, it should be. Everyone. I'm not should sure if every figure it. has it. Does every figure? I think have every it? figure does. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hmm. I must have. I opened my Snapdragon last night, so I was like, "I'll just show you guys," but then it was like, "No, I don't see it anywhere." So I must have thrown <laughs> it's it somewhere, somewhere on my floor. in the box. It's either on the packet, the plastic, or the the cardboard. I, I like it. Yeah, kind of depends on the figure. Um, let me see. So we, we used to get more fun stuff to kind of tell the story on the toy boxes than we do these days. I don't know. I mean, I think, again, that that map and the decoder and stuff is kind of a, a neat thing. So the only thing that's frustrating is is that it's, like, they've got map pieces on, like, everything, right? So then you have to buy, like, if you want to complete the map, you have to buy everything and keep the Pretty packaging off of, off of all of that. So um, Who, who keeps pack. packaging? <laughs> Oh my goodness, we so shouldn't. <laughs> it gets right, so cluttered. Right. I yeah. cut everything up. That's how it <laughs> makes it so streamlined. Now it's just cutting it up and saving the most integral parts. You you the cut your box. packaging up? Yeah. You monster. That's how toy lines get forgotten. <laughs> yes. Not really. 
That's what the yeah, that is for. one thing with the, some of the packaging and whatnot is is that I'm sure some of that's lost the time over the years is you know some of the older stuff that's like 35 you know 30 35 years old it's it's hard to find you know like not the stuff that was released like mainline stuff but you know some of the weird weird things or like things that were released in other countries right. um you know like some of the south american figures or mexican figures and things like that and i think that's a good segue because when um when you were all talking about Machine Wars, and I was like, there was no fiction for that, I actually wasn't sure. Because I thought, you know, maybe there was some obscure Japanese packing comic. Maybe there was a packing comic I didn't know about because I never opened yeah. a figure from that line. Maybe there was some fan fiction written that became canon at one point. Who knows what could happen? Because sometimes you completely miss things. Like, the number of people I brought up this nonsense. This is one of the packing comics right. from the Legends figures. The number of people I brought these up to, and, you know, they are just very short in Japanese comics, packed in with the Legends figures. I brought these up to people, they don't know what they are, they have no clue what it is, and, you know, it is fiction you could have. You know, it is a universe of Transformers that is very silly, and very fourth wall breaking at all times. Then I just think people aren't going to really remember too well. You know, I think in a few years, it won't be something we really talk about anymore. It'll just be one of those obscure things that Anna likes and no one else cares about. <laughs> no, I mean, I think that the Japanese stuff, it's it's things that, like, the hardcore collectors really enjoy. But, yeah, like, I mean, most people, well, first off, like, the average Transformer fan is probably not collecting the Japanese releases. Um, you know, but then it's, you know, just depends on the thing. Cause like not all of them came with, uh, uh, with comics. Yeah. I'm sure there's some that didn't, I can't remember which ones did and didn't. I don't even have this figure, which is the funny thing. I don't even have <laughs> this figure, but I have the comic. Cause I love the comics. They're so weird uncomfortable like 50 percent of the time how, how did you come in to possess that comic without the figure that's that's unusual to me someone had it they were tossing it so i took it oh well, okay that, that makes sense i had the opportunity i i find the portrayals of certain characters in these comics to be absolutely bizarre mm. you know this one ends in a weird compromised banana peel club <laughs> Or Nightbird. It's bizarre. I mean, we're talking about a character that was originally a mindless robot drone. And See, now, now I want a Generation Select Banana Peel. Well, just you wait. Just you wait until the next time we get um, a set of accessories. And, and, and it'll get repainted into Botanica. <laughs> they'll, they'll call it Bananica. <laughs> That would be really funny. You get your wish to get a Botanica, but it's like a a one-to-one -one scale of a flower that's like some little on-detailed figure. Oh, it's a Bot-Bot. There we go. There we okay. go. I would take it. I, it would be I good enough. Be new. As long as they call it Banana. That would be a good pun. So, so yeah, I uh, think there's other, there's probably other series as well. That have been forgotten, um, you so know. Jack, like, I what, what's your pick for forgotten yeah. series? Uh, you also, forgot. I can. It's like you guys already pretty much got my pick, so it's just, I was trying to think of something else. Um. Yeah, I can't really think of anything else. Yeah, I mean, you know, a more recent characters. one. A more recent one that I feel like is just going to be completely forgotten, I feel like, is the new R.I.D. that was from 2015. I think that that, because it was its own thing and whatnot, yeah. like, I just feel like that, I mean, we we still kind of remember it now, but, like, here in a couple years, I think it's just going to be... And that, that cartoon, I can't remember how many episodes it had on it, but, like, didn't it have, like, a three-year run? I think yeah, so, yeah, because sure. I remember yeah. going into 17. Yeah, it's bizarre because I've several times I've sat down and I've tried to ask myself, 
why haven't you watched Robots in Disguise? Why haven't you watched that series? You've gone and watched Cyberverse, which is equally, you know, the kids series. So why didn't I watch Robots in Disguise? And I can never actually answer the question. I always think, like, I don't know why I didn't watch that. It just didn't happen. I feel yeah, like a lot I of watched, people did that. They just skipped it. I watched, like, a, fo- a solid five minutes of RAD 2015, and I was already done. I'm like, no, no, <laughs> just no. It, so pretty it much I forgot points. about it. Yeah. It has some good points, but I have to say the the characters of uh, Danny Clay and uh, what, was, what was the kid, uh, the son? Uh, well anyway they were just at at times they were unnecessarily silly Mm. um, I thought Uh, overall it it was okay I just haven't watched it I have a couple of the toys but that's really it yeah I I don't know I mean I think that it Again, I feel like that cartoon, like Robots in Disguise and or the the new one and um, Cyberverse both, like I don't feel like it's interesting enough to hold my attention. Like, I mean, it's kind of you know a fun little diversion. You sit down for you know twenty minutes and, and watch a show, but like it's it's nothing to where it's like, oh man, I really have to like tune in next week and find out what's what's going on but i've heard that both of those shows like it seems like they kind of start off slow and the first season's kind of rough and then like the later seasons are better is what i hear but again i've never been able to get far enough in those shows to uh to to do it and it'd be one of those things where my kids would like they're not clamoring to watch you know those shows either um and so that's kind of been part of the thing for me that it's like well if I can't, if my kids don't care, you know, I'm not sure that I'm going to sit down and get through it, too. Yeah, I think you're right, though. I think it will be neglected, and I'm not entirely sure why. I mean, I guess it's just, like, not super engaging for the adult fans, and the kid fans will probably just move on to the next thing. Now, who knows, though, you know, in 10, 15 years... There could be fans that are then old enough to want fancy toys or want fancy recreations or want revisitings. That some of it could come back. You never know. I honestly, like, I was a mean teenager, well, late teenager at the time that Unicron Trilogy ran. And I would have never thought anyone would care for Unicron Trilogy to be, you know, remastered, new toys made, revisited. I would have never thought that because I was just that mean sarcastic teenager who was like oh this isn't cool like my Transformers so you know maybe we're just doing that again maybe it will come back maybe people will love it I was just I was just surprised they made R.I.D. 2015 a sequel to Prime I I kept thinking they were just going to do something new all of a sudden it's like oh yeah it's a sequel to Prime huh (laughs) And you feel like that should have motivated me to watch it. Maybe it's a yeah. sequel date again. Maybe sequels are a great idea. Pretty much how I felt. I was just like, nah. Because I love Prime. Prime's cool, but just no interest in watching R.I.D. 2015. But why didn't they have any noses? <laughs> Prime didn't have a lot what, of noses. What was that about? Just no noses. Why did they need noses, Jim? Uh, our, our ideas. They don't need to breathe. You know, well, they, well, they don't need eyes either. They need some sort of camera. They, 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 they've got sensors. I think <laughs> eyes are a why, perfect why, compromise. Why, why, why be humanoid in shape? They could be more like, uh, what was it, uh, Scavenger and Revenge of the Fallen. It be a, a pair of wheels with arms. Jeff, Jeff, stop now. Don't remind, the last yeah, don't time... Remind. The last time someone went down this road, we got the Bayverse movies. Which had some of the best designs. Story notwithstanding, uh-huh. some of the designs were wonderful. Really so, good. that being said, let's move on to Twilight. Bad, eh? uh, I want a Transformer that turns into a nose. Nothing but a nose. That's the alt mode. So you can put it on your Prime figures. Giant. Your ID figures. It'd be an add-on. Like this. It, it, it won't Perfect. <laughs> so 
I guess we can talk about the the like forgotten sub lines and toy lines. Oh, actually... see, I threw my machine wars in the wrong spot. I'm sorry. Oh, that's see, okay. I, I broke all the rules. I shouldn't have you're, thrown that in earlier. You're immune to schedules and organization. No matter how much I try, I can never get you to do things with a the plan. There I mean, you as, as far as, all right. as, far as other, ones, other ones that are forgotten, you've got, uh, heck, you, you've got Universe 1.0, you've got Classics 1.0. Those, those, those are both pretty fun, pretty fun series. Ah. Yeah. Well, the one I really wanted to bring up, and I don't know if any of my other Power Core apologists are around right now, but I need a Christian on the show with me to talk about it. But, you know, there's, there's Power Core Combiners. Mm-hmm. And I think Power Core Combiners was a brilliant line of toys that they did a weird design decision with. Right, like if you remember, these don't technically have a continuity they exist in. They're kind of movie figures. They kind of reach into G one sometimes. They kind of exist as their own thing, and I think that was an attempt to be like, oh, this will be universe agnostic, and everyone will like it. But I think what really happened was it was universe agnostic, and no one cared. Because <laughs> to complete your G one collection, do you need Power Core? No. To complete your movie collection, do you need Power Core? No. You don't need it for anything other than if you want to complete a Power Core collection, which, as far as I know, Christian and I are like the only humans who have that desire. I'm sure there's sure. some viewers out there I'm that sure. are into it, but I don't know. Not the thing I. Blinders. Let us know. The thing, the thing I feel like is tough. Now, um, are they Scramble style Power Core combined? I have no idea. They are. Yeah. Okay, Somewhat, so yeah. uh, arms arms can't necessarily become legs and vice versa, but yeah, right and left are And when they sold them, did they sell them as individual figures or as sets? Yes. So they sold them in two ways. They sold them either as the commander packs that is the single center figure. You know, this is the torso guy, and he came with what is essentially the combination of a mini con and a target master like they were mm-hmm. largely weapons of various sorts you know my favorite was the axe mold for this but you know they were missile launchers and guns and whatnot and completely unrelated to the actual combination mechanic they were mostly just mini cons that played with the figures so you get them this way this guy acts as a torso but doesn't have drones they come with them specifically or you could buy the five packs that were the combiner packs and you know those came with a center figure with the torso guy and then four drones so that you could make the combined mode mm-hmm. for the figure so you know there were actually quite a few of these you know it wasn't really it wasn't a 12 figure line it was probably a 12 mold line but there were enough repaints and repurposings that it's not a tiny line it takes up a solid two shelves in my bookshelf behind me if you never noticed before that I have two shells devoted to power core, now you'll never forget <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just curious if, you know, one of two things. Like, one, those five packs that they released, like, I don't even know whatever the price point was, but like, like 30 you know, bucks, I think. If that like, was a- if been, if the price 20. point was high enough to where it's not an impulse buy for parents, so like kids, you know, wouldn't like necessarily get it and then if there's no fiction behind it like why are you going to try and get that as i mean other than the fact that it's like oh cool robot combining toy but like for yeah, the cool. average kid most kids want <sighs> some fiction with it so they're probably into like pokemon or um the power rangers or something like that instead of power core combiners that's what i, I just i just thought of the perfect joke there's that meme that's like mom i want this but it's like the mom's like, oh, we have this at home, but it's like something completely different. I was just thinking, it, it's like, <laughs> mom, I want a combiner transformer, but we have combiner transformers at home, and what you have at home is power con- combiners when you want a combiner wars <laughs> stuff. Now, 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 Anna, the in the power core combiners, the the mini cons that came with the individual uh, was it commander packs? Yeah. If I recall correctly, couldn't those mini cons, if you got all six of the bolts, couldn't they combine together? 
into it. You know, I've it. never heard that before, but was, now I'm going to try it right after the show. <laughs> He's like, I am interested. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to look that up right quick. I'm going to have to check into that because if you can combine them, I have like two or three of each of the mini cons. So. Yeah, you, you, you guys go ahead for just a, just a hot second. I'm going to take a look this up real fast. Well, I just want to talk about how people like I remember back in the day, like right after these, you know, kind of ran their course, they became a Black Friday sell at Walmart. And what they did is they packed, you know, one of the one of the commander packs and one of the combiner packs together. And it was like ten dollars, twelve dollars, something like it's that. So and there was just <laughs> in caps, you know, giant, giant piles oh, of them that you could buy. And, you know, that's where I got like the beginning of my power core collection. And I remember that the only one that actually had any value was Grimstone, the Dinobot combiner, because, you know, they produced this thing in traditional Dinobot colors. It was, I guess, our first, like, full five-part Dinobot combiner at the time. And people just kind of, like, they wanted this one. They didn't care about the rest of the series. Yeah, it's like every time I go out to the store, every time I go out to the store, Every end cap was still full of power core. No, nobody in my area wanted them. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> yeah, that's that's how I got my. That's how I began, and now I have a pretty full collection of them. But I think, like you know, people made their own connection for this. They were like, "Oh, it's like the lost Dinobot. It's like a Dinobot combiner, Blah blah blah. Like, I think people were willing to do that, but they weren't willing to take you know one of these new characters are one of these, like, vaguely movie-ish characters and make it matter. They were just like, eh, it's just a toy. It doesn't really yeah. matter. Even though I think they were pretty creative. And I, and I just wonder, too, is, is is that part of the reason why, you know, Hasbro is, you know, doesn't do a lot of new characters, like, when they're releasing right. Generations and things like that, is, is because of some of this kind of stuff where, you know, that... That they're like, oh, that didn't sell back in the day when we tried to do a new one. Yeah, sometimes it just falls flat. I feel like I feel like this line, unfortunately, fell flat. Even though now I, I will say, handling them now and like all of most of mine are used, and the ones that aren't used, I've had long enough that I've kind of worn them out. You know, they're getting a little loose at this point, and being kind of gangly combiners, they're a little difficult to mess with as they age. But largely, I feel like they were cool designs. They were something different. They were something new. And they were um, an attempt to make combiners with drones instead of sacrifice limb people. Right? Something that's always bugged me as a Transformers fan is when you make Defensor, you've basically got it. You basically chucked four characters and, you know, gone from five to one. And four different people are just limbs at that point, which is bizarre. You avoid that kind of weird, kind of dissonance, psychological horror aspect if they're just drones. You know, like, this is just a little dinosaur robot that has guns on it, and it becomes a leg then. No weird existential questions about sentience. Sorry, I'm sure not everyone thinks as much about the consequences of combining but I know it was a it was a plot in the comics. Yeah, yeah, I know it was. So, so not with the power core combiners better. though, but No, no, <laughs> well, traditional combiners. Quick yeah, Google right. search and all I can find is uh, like Amazon listings and uh, announcements for when the line first came out on like TFW. So you got my hopes up. Uh you got my hopes well, no, up. I, I, I just think I remember having tried to get them all so I could combine the mini cons <laughs> together. Because I, I couldn't find smaller, uh, uh, yeah, s- smaller with chopster is the one I couldn't find. Hmm. Um, it it might have been a fan mode, I don't know, but uh, I seem I seem to distinctly remember them all going together, just the mini cons themselves. That makes uh, sense. I'll, I'll I'll keep looking into it though, and I, and if I if I do run across it, I'll, I'll let you know. Well, you know, fifteen years later or whatever, I have an extra smolder with chopster if you ever need one. I don't even have any. Other. Powerpoints anymore. It's been so long. Uh, yeah, no one cares about that. That's the joke. Might, no one I cares about a, these guys. I might have a junkie mm-hmm. stuff, maybe. But I, I feel like 
I feel like they tried to homage a few different things, right? Because they had, you know, basically literal mini cons. And the point was to take them, you know, do like a power combination mode where you literally stick them on your main dude's chest as a power source, which is an homage to perhaps <clears throat> the dumbest looking Transformers gimmick. Cross force. Yeah, it's not pretty. And, you know, it can also be a Power Masters homage if you want it to be. It's just. I think they did a good thing, and I think it was forgotten, and it's a tragedy. Everybody should go and start a Power Core Combiners collection. Lucas is trying to tell you no, he's sabotaging me. No. <laughs> One good thing about starting a Power Core Combiners collection is it's extremely cheap to do. I mean, I guess that's true. They have no value. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I guess if you wanted to start a Power Core and Beast Machines collections, like, it wouldn't cost you that much to do it. But then once you're done with it, you're like, what have, you're done. Done. <laughs> what have I done? What have I done? I don't feel that way for my Power Core collection, but I still feel that way about Beast Machines, even though I've sold all of it. <laughs> the regret will always be there. And I guess, like, you know, otherwise, all I really have is, like, obscure sublines for us to talk about. You know, like, I, when I was thinking about obscure things that people don't talk about, I mentioned it earlier, but with Beast Wars, you know, everybody has this longing for Beast Wars. Everybody's always talking about, will we ever get a good version of Transmetal this, Transmetal that, et cetera, and so on. <laughs> what I always think of is how jealous I was of my couple of friends who managed to find mutants. Like, I could never find the darn Beast Wars mutants. You know, there were only four. I put up three figures. Four! There were only four of them even made. And I could never find them. Yeah, there, there was, there was Soundwave and then three others that nobody remembers. Oh. oh. Mostly Soundwave. He was like a, like a bat alligator or something, wasn't he? Yep. Yeah. Well, Thanks to Chris McFeely's basic series, I found that out a couple days ago. Well, let me tell you, Icebird was an innovative creature combining a polar bear and an owl. That I'm, I'm you upset they didn't say the life. Owler bear. Right, there were, there were much better pun names they could have used for those things. But it's a bummer, because I feel like I feel like it was an attempt at something that probably shouldn't be attempted. You know, a Transformer that has two alt modes instead of having a robot mode because, you know, all of us want to play with the robots, all of us want to display the robots, and then it's like, we're going to take out the robot mode and see if you still like this toy. But at the same time, it's innovation. You know, it's creative. It's new. I like it. So if there was, you know, something I was going to go back and try to find, I'd find them. I just don't see them trying anything like that again because of how odd of an idea it is. Should should we consider Beast Machines Beast Changer, you know, the, the Noble Savage as an honorary mutants uh, figure? Some people do. Should we? I don't know. So, since Beast Machines is a successor to Beast Wars, you know, kind of fit. He turns, from a, he turns so. from a not really dragon to a not really wolf. You know, yes, from one vigory to another. Yeah, one of the many rejected taglines for the original Transformers. <laughs> yeah, it's just I don't know. It's like that's extremely appealing to me. You know, this kind of weird idea. But I found out today, and talking to people about it is, you know, really the only reason we got mutants was because there was that Animorphs toy line. And there were some designs they never published, so they basically did a little bit of gutting and remolding to make them into something they could fit into Transformers by being two animals to change into each other and taking out the human side. So, and, and Animorphs had fiction? Well, Animorphs, yeah. Animorphs was <laughs> an attempt to just like kind of buy into the Transformers line with and, existing and successful a TV show. fiction. They had a TV show as well. Yeah, it was a popular thing. And it just kind of became a Transformers subline. Because yes. why not? Why not? 
I don't think those figures were terrible, but most people do think those figures were terrible. <laughs> they were very much Beast Wars era engineering. Very much. Ball joints and awkward human faces. Oh yeah, and and the the clothing. So, I don't know. It, it was a strange line. It was. So I feel like you know a lot of these things are so obscure when you hear about them. You're just like, I don't even know what you're talking about. And it's kind of a bummer that you know they get lost to time. I seriously do not see there ever being a Generation Celeste figure made off of Tower Core Combiners, right? Like, I don't see uh -huh. them be like, let's do a Generation uh -huh. Celeste where we take the robot mode out of a Combiner War set. I mean, I guess I could see something, like, if they did one, like like you said, that, um, <clears throat> like, if they could do some type of remold or repaint or whatnot to homage one of them, but yeah, you're, you're not going to get the whole line. I don't even think we'll get one, honestly. Yeah, probably. I don't think we'll get a mutant either. I think it would be cool if we did, but I don't think we will. But I feel like kind of the thing we've circled around multiple times is it's just kind of a place in fiction is often why these things get forgotten. You know, not having the place we wanted it to have in fiction or not having a place at all in fiction in the case of Power Core and the mutants had write-ups you know they had a place in the fiction but not really strong enough to really stick around i feel like that's a lot of what does it for us though there's uh there's one thought i i just had a moment ago too is uh i'll, I'll be possibly indirectly uh, I, I guess uh one other factor that could be causing a lot of these others to kind of fall by the wayside and fade into obscurity would be the what's what's now called evergreen the the adherence to generation one uh in various incarnations over and over uh as if that's like the only definitive uh transformers uh that they keep defaulting back to and as a result a lot of this other stuff that's happened over the years tends to kind of fall by the wayside i'm, I'm wondering if that that might not be a factor as well that we're that we're missing because uh, if, you, if you look at Generations, uh, right now we've got, well, we, we had the Prime Wars trilogy, now we got the War for Cybertron trilogy. Almost every bit of that is, in one form or another, Generation 1. You've got Titans, you've got Combiners, you've got uh, various Masters, you know. Uh, you've got your cars, you've got your jets. Um, granted, yes, there's, there's lots of uh, Generation 1 that we hadn't previously gotten. Like, you know, we finally got your mic just went again. Your mic, your mic went out. <laughs> Troll it off again in your story. Cliffhanger. I think you've made a good point, though. I really do, because I think that's what's kind of happened, is that what works and what we've seen that works is really latching things onto G1. And when you don't do that, it doesn't work as well. So you get this concept of evergreen. Yeah. You get this concept of play patterns that connect things together. And I think it just works better to actually get people to remember it. It doesn't mean you shouldn't like your favorite thing just because it's obscure. If you're a kids players collector, you're still you're still a Transformers collector. We still care about you. Now, at the same time, except for Jack, I, apparently. At, at the same time, over the years, um, it seems as though they've been gradually working their way through Generation One, uh, era by era. And I, I think if, if, that, uh, if that's true, then I think we're starting to get to the end of that. Because uh, like, like with Kingdom, they're starting to enter into Beast Wars, and they're also right. touching on G2 here and there. Uh, I just have four things I hope that we can get before they move on to whatever else they do next. I'm hoping we can get a Squawk Box, a Horrible, Axer, and Rad. If I get those four things, I'm good. I could definitely see at least a couple of those. I think horrible is going to happen at some point. I think horrible and squawk box would be wonderful to put into a, into a kingdom because the yeah. beast modes plus. I think squawk box could do it. Resemblance to the terror You feed it off again. Yeah. 
Ghostbusters has to be coming out. Hasbro toys. It could be a thing. It's quiet. Yeah, your mic's cutting out again. Jim's cutting himself off here, so. And he's gone. Here at TFL, but yeah, I don't. I don't know if there's any other we're forgotten only sonic words. forgotten lines that we that we are. Uh, are forgetting here. I'm sure, you know, the viewers, uh, let us know if there's any other forgotten transformers that we forgot that you remember, uh, you know, just, uh, bring those up in the comments, uh, or on our next show and whatnot as well. Oh, Hey, is that the new reissue? Uh, yeah, Blaster? I'm pretty much saying that blaster is pretty much forgotten. Cause I was kind of messing with him. I'm like, I kind of wonder. So I was looking at his wiki page his most recent appearance has been Fall of Cybertron. And mm -hmm. even then, it's like, eh. No, no, we, got, really uh, we got one in Titans Return, a leader class figure. Oh, no, I'm saying, like, actually in fiction. In, in fiction. Oh, in fiction, yeah. I gotcha. Like, yeah, no, I would agree. What? I'm like, let's bring Blaster back, come on. Yeah. I agree, Blaster, another tragedy Blaster's is Jazz. Yeah. Jazz hasn't got to be in anything for a while. So, all right. Well, do you guys uh, have any other final thoughts? I predict that the viewers in the comments will bring up final talk. <laughs> My prediction. <laughs> okay. Alternity. Ooh, Robot Master. There's all kinds of stuff they could bring up. Yeah, we didn't really Anybody? touch on Japanese stuff all that much. Any? But, I mean, I kind of feel like this is, we could go on for days about that. Um, you know, for sure. Like just well, that, that, that could be a that US could be a part stuff. two, a, a, an addendum right. to this one. We we just focused on U.S. lines. Right, right, right. So, anybody brings Except up kiss players, I'm gonna smack them. <laughs> this is the part where we should be doing me. this thing. <laughs> um, and then I also want to yeah. mention our our other shows here. Uh, so we've got microcasters Tuesday nights. 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central. That is live on our uh, the TF Talk uh, Facebook page or tftalk.net Facebook page. So uh, check that out Tuesday nights. Um, we also put it up later in the week on YouTube as well. Uh, Out to my wallet is every couple of weeks uh, where we talk about some of the new toys that we got uh, that, uh, that hurt our wallet. Um, and then also... Uh, uh, Rick has cut the tape where he opens up some of his old figures that he's been have been sitting around in boxes for years and years and years. Uh, so check that as, out as well. So, And if you want to continue the conversation, join us on Discord. We have the link up on our, uh, uh, on our Twitter page and also up on uh, the YouTube links as well. And, um, you know, if you like what we do, consider supporting us on Patreon, patreon.com slash TFYLP, uh, tears from a dollar on up. So, um, all right. Well, thank you guys for joining me today. And, uh, we will have this up at some point whenever when unavailable on a Monday. So T tell all me right. this doesn't look like a nose. I mean, come on. If, if Nigel Thornberry was a transformer. <laughs> all right. Time to end. See y'all later. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, everyone. Smashing.